Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me again on another episode of Powerhouse U. I am so excited today because I am joined for the second time by Dominique Maddock, the restaurant broker from Dallas, Texas. Uh, Dominique, hi. How are you? Hey, I appreciate the opportunity to come on for the second time. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. No problem at all. So um, for the listeners out there, Dominic and Dominique and I actually did a episode uh, last year on uh, intro to business brokers. So if you want to take a look at the past episode and that'll catch you up with what we are going to talk about today. And what we are going to do is actually go over uh, what has changed in the business in a good way for Dominique over the last uh, year and some change as far as his relocation to uh, the Dallas market and what that has meant for him in growing his business so dominic dominique i keep <laughs> forgive uh, me doing this I'm, I'm gonna get it right dominique so dominica uh, i've been called worse so i've been called worse <laughs> so don't worry all right i won't i'm gonna get it right okay. but yeah uh just give us a little recap over what has happened in the last uh year and uh how it's been for you out there? So since we last talked, I've really established myself in the Texas market as uh, one of the few restaurant brokers in the um, state that actually specializes in you know, only selling uh, restaurants, bars, and nightclubs. And that's actually allowed me to expand my business outside of the state of Texas. Now I'm actually picking up listings in New Mexico. And if you look on bizbysale.com right now, I have the largest listing for a restaurant for sale for $7 million in New Mexico for six restaurants. Um, and also I have one for 1.4 million. So I got 8.4 million in inventory in New Mexico. Um, so I, I got the chance to go out there and visit. And you know, that's one great thing about my business is that I can sell restaurants in different states. It's very different than just a residential real estate agent or someone who's, you know, I, even though I have a license here in the state of Texas to sell real estate, um, I don't need it if I'm just selling restaurants. Um, so a lot is a lot has changed, uh, you know, since we last talked. I mean, this is I'm wrapping up year four, eleven years total in the business. Year four of uh, owning my own brokerage, and I've changed some things. And um, you know, I got I took a lot, I got a lot of wins this year that I'm really fortunate for. Congratulations! Thank you so much. Thank You're you. welcome. Did you uh, even brag about that on LinkedIn or any type of social media? Uh, I, I brag a little bit about it, but a lot of stuff, it, it's so, um, I did brag. What can I say? I, 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 well, I had to. I had <laughs> to be to. humble. I, I, I had to. And the reason, the reason I say that, because I remember the first time that I got over a million in inventory was yeah. actually in 2020. And I took a picture holding a sign that said 1.3 million because I was so excited to get over a million in inventory. And now getting a million dollar listing, it's okay, but I want so much more now. Like I wouldn't take a picture now, uh, just, but it just shows you the growth of my business and I'm excited to see where it goes in the future. Yeah, so tell me when it came to um, growing your business, because you've been at this for about 12 years or give or take. So can you tell me how did you market your business and yourself when in the brand, when you started? versus now what has changed and and how do you see that that has helped your business well when you first start it's a lot of cold calling because people don't know that you're an expert in the industry so you have to contact a lot of people a lot of cold calling um i used to do a lot of walking into restaurants passing out flyers when i first started um but now my business is focusing on, on seo when it comes to my website my search engine optimization to make mm -hmm. sure that, that when people are looking for a restaurant broker, you know, my website search is very high. And it's also focusing on relationships that I've built over time because I've able to been build my credibility. So now I build relationships with certain people that are in the restaurant industry that I know that can help me in the future. Um, and then also that I can help them because the only thing I do is sell restaurants, bars, and nightclubs. So a lot of times I'm not competition with other business brokers. I get listing, I get leads from other business brokers that don't specialize in selling restaurants because they don't know what they're doing. So they'll send them to me. But if someone comes to me with a car wash, I actually just had someone come to me with a car wash. I referred it to another broker. I had someone come to me for an auto shop uh, um, 
repair shop. I don't do that. Restaurants, bars, and nightclubs. I'm the restaurant broker. So I had to refer that to another business broker. So it's building those relationships with key people in the industry. That's really how it's changed um, when it comes to getting leads and kind of what I spend my time on. Yeah, so that means that you're pretty much branded as a as a specialist in only those three areas, That's bars, right. nightclubs, and, and restaurants. So anything outside of what you specialize in, you send it out because if there's a learning curve, I'm assuming that's involved in all that, but you become a specialist in these three items. So you're just focused there, which is, which is a good thing. So if anybody needs to sell those three items only, they know to come to you, which, wow. which is good. So do you do any like email blast, any paper marketing, or was it all cold calling and door yeah. knocking? When I first started, it was, I was under a firm. Mm -hmm. I worked under a big restaurant broker firm for seven years. So it was trying to build my name up under their brand as, hey, a restaurant broker that specialized in what I do. So yeah, it was a lot of cold calling, emails, um, a lot of networking events. Mm -hmm. That helped me out. Um, but now it I do a lot of networking events still now. But I target certain people that I want to build relationships with. I don't have to go in and build a relationship with everybody in the room. There's there's only certain people that have that synergy when it comes to my business. So I could just focus directly on them rather than trying to work the whole room. Um, and then also just letting people know what I know. A lot of people have, even though I did this podcast with you and it's been a year later, a lot of people still haven't heard the term restaurant broker. Or a lot of people don't even know what I do. They think I own restaurants. It's crazy when people say, hey, when can I come to your restaurant? I'm like, man, I'm not cooking. Like, no, I'm cooking up deals. What do you mean? You know? Right. That's funny. Like, they got the wrong impression. Like, no, I sell restaurants. I, I get yeah. it. Yeah, so that that's good. So is it kind of safe to say that how you started is helping for you because you just perfected how to do it? So you're still it's doing everything in the beginning, but you just – you've learned who to go after. Exactly. So you're not targeting just spray and shoot. And it's reps, reps, reps. And also one thing I do even now is I love to cold call. I love to call for sale by owners mm -hmm. to see if they want someone to help them out. I like to send cold call emails to people who, if I find their website, if I find their email address online and I know they own a couple of restaurants, I'm going to target them. So I do a lot of cold calling myself, even though I'm at the stage where I'm at now, that's something that'll never stop. This is a business you always have to hunt. You can't just have one stream of leads coming in. Now I have multiple streams come in of leads. And then if those don't come in, I'm going to go get mine. And that's why a lot of people can't survive in this industry because you got to go hunt. Like you got to be hungry. And every day is not a good day. A lot of days are bad days. A lot of days. Yeah. But those, I know one call can change my life. What did Rick Ross say? Every day I'm hustling, hustling, oh, oh. <laughs> hustling real hard. That's yeah. that's what it's all about. Exactly. So yeah. So another question I have for you are: What are some of the financial challenges that you faced when you were starting your business, and um, how did you grow through those financial challenges? Well, the biggest financial challenge of becoming a business broker or a restaurant broker is it can take six to eight months to sell a business. I know it definitely takes six to eight months to sell a restaurant. So it's not like selling a house where if you sell, if you don't sell it in a month or two, you're like, man, what happened? You know, what's going on in this business? So even if you get a listing today, just say I got it in December, I may not close it to June or July. I may not see a commission on that deal. So I'm paying for the marketing fees. I'm paying for my time. So that's one of the biggest things that people can't make in this industry is it because they don't have enough income put aside to start in this business. I started this business when I was broke. So I had to hustle even harder because I knew it was going to take six to eight months to get a deal. So what I had to do is I made a lot of sacrifices in my life. You know, there was a lot of nights I didn't go out. There's a lot of times I didn't eat what I actually wanted to eat. I eat what I could afford. Um, so a lot of the sacrifices that I made, people aren't going to want to make. And that's why a lot of people, that's why a lot of people can't be in this industry that I'm in as a restaurant broker or as a business broker. Just to let you know, the average age for a business broker is 55. I started this business when I was 29. I, I owned my own brokerage when I was 37. 
So there's a reason why the average age is 55, because a lot of times you'll have retirement accounts you can use, you know, like you'll have this other money that you can have as a nest egg while you're building up your business. I didn't have that. So I had to go even harder. Um, and that's, you know, when people say, how did I survive? I just did. It was tough. You know, it's humbling. You know, humbling is one of the biggest words that I can use in this business, because you, a lot of people think they're going to come in and just blow it out the water. Just, oh, you know, you know, they hear about the big commission checks and stuff like that, but they don't hear about the, the struggles and the challenges it takes to build up your book of business. And then also one thing is only 30 to 40 percent of restaurants listed for sale actually sell. So just think you if you get 10 listings, only three or four may sell. So everything you touch isn't going to sell. So you got to survive that too. So yeah, um, exactly. But, you know, at the end of the day, I bet on myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew that if I sacrifice right now, the life that I want to live is only five to 10 years away. And it's funny you said that because I was reading a book um, by Mel Robbins. It's called The Five Hi uh, High Five Habit. And she said something that actually changed my life because she said that you could either follow your dreams or be haunted by them. And it's just like, which one would you rather do? Do you want to sit here and just be content in life? Or would you rather make the sacrifices you need in order to make this the future you a reality, the person that you see yourself becoming? And, you know, needless to say, that set me straight because a lot of times we think about, oh, we want to do this. Oh, we want to do that. But are you willing to make the sacrifices to make it happen for yourself and for your future or your career? Because, you know... Do you know where you would be if you didn't follow your dreams? And I'm pretty sure you would rather be where you are today. 100%. Even when I was struggling, I was like, I'd rather be doing this than helping someone else build up their own dream. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I'm, working on, I'm working on my dream. I just know my day may not be today, but it could definitely be tomorrow. <laughs> Every day I jump out the bed because I never know one fall could change my life. Like, I wasn't expecting to get a $7 million listing in New Mexico. I never even thought about visiting New Mexico. But once I got that $7 million call, yeah, I'm in New Mexico. <laughs> you know, Before visiting. we go to the next question, though, you got to tell me how that happened. So how, because you're in Texas. So tell me how you got that big deal in New Mexico. Well, they found me online. So as a broker, you're going to put all your listings online. Mm -hmm. So they found that a, a listing that I have for $1.4 million, and they found they found that. They also looked at my website. They contacted me. They did a Zoom meeting with me, an interview. And then they sent me about 10 follow-up questions where I sent them spreadsheets and presentations. So I had to work for that. You know, and, and, also, qualify. Exactly, and also, they're not used to seeing someone that looks like me in this business. So a lot of times, I have to go through an extra level of scrutiny. Like, you know, like, do you really know what you're talking about? Do you really know what you're talking about? But at the end of the day... In this business, numbers don't lie. And I'm very good at restaurant valuations. And I'm very good at explaining how, how I came up with the restaurant valuations. Yeah. Because I've been doing it for so many years. 100% too. And then a good thing about it is they chose you. So regardless of who they saw and whatever person they compared you against, they saw, you know, your experience and your knowledge outweighed everything else. So they're like, I'm going to get choose somebody that knows how to get the job done and that's what enabled you to stand out so in my mind that was more important to them than anything else is can he handle business and you told them yes and as a matter of fact I can handle it better than anybody else so even though you had to go the extra mile you know and they did reach out to you. So you already ahead of the game there. So you proved yourself. So congratulations. And yeah. uh, yes. So you guys, if anybody's looking for a restaurant in New Mexico, that's about, what, $7 million. $7 million for six of them. For six of them. For and six, a commissary. Six restaurant. <laughs> and a, uh, reach out to Dominique. Dominique, you, you know yeah. where to find them. All right. So so with the next question that I have for you is uh, tell me about a time in your business or career where you had to pivot and what happened to let you know that it was time to change and what was the outcome? What did you do to, well, to, to make the outcome? So my you know, I hold on time out because uh -huh. I'm not even going to cut this out because I have this question and I always get tongue tied when I 
ask it. <laughs> so let me ask it one more time. Okay. So tell me about a time in your business or career where you had to pivot. What happened that let you know that it was time for a change? My big pivot happened when I moved to Texas mm -hmm. um, in 2021. And the reason I had moved the, at the time, because I was dealing with a non-compete agreement that stopped me from selling restaurants in Atlanta and 31 counties surrounding Atlanta for two years. It got extended to three years, but I won't talk about the legal aspect. So just say three years, I couldn't sell restaurants in Atlanta or 31 counties surrounding Atlanta. So it was stay in Atlanta and fold my business or move out of state and bet on myself. Mm -hmm. And I decided to move out of state. So start doing research on, okay, what states that I can I move to that have a lot of restaurants. And I was like, it gets no bigger than Texas. <laughs> so, um, you know, packed up the bags, packed up the family, like, hey, we're moving out to Texas. Like, so, um, but when I, when I was moving in my mind, I just thought, I have no one to blame if I'm not successful because now I'm moving outside of the non-compete. Yes, I have to recreate myself. Yes, I have to introduce myself to a new crowd that has never met me before, but I like my chances and I know what I do and I know I'm a specialist in this industry and I know there's very few people in the nation that can call themselves a restaurant broker and they have more experience than me. So that pivot was selling the house in Johns Creek, Georgia, you know, the dream house in Johns Creek, Georgia, and downsizing and humbling myself, going back to renting in Texas, why I'm trying to learn the land and, you know, figure everything out. So that that was a huge pivot that I had to make. It's, you know, do I fold my dreams and stay in Atlanta in a city that I love? Or do I just bet on myself, pick a random city in Texas Dallas, you know, on the map and <laughs> and move. So that was a big pivot for me. And it's finally paying off, you know, two years later. Yeah. Congratulations. And yeah. yes, we're connected on LinkedIn too. So, you know, I'm all in your business. Like, oh, look at him. <laughs> like heart care. You're really wow. doing it. I'm, I'm definitely proud of you. And uh, so with everything that you have going on too, can you tell me who has been your most uh, important mentor and why? Well, my most important mentor is actually no longer living. Um, her name is Cindy Combs. And um, when I was at, she hired me at, to work at um, New York Life, selling life insurance as an internship. And I'm like, okay, you know, so I started it and actually liked it because the training, you know, they taught me how to cold call. They taught me how to present. They taught me how, they taught me how to talk. They taught me how to do face-to-face -face presentations. So after I left Morehouse and graduated, you know, most people go get these high paying jobs, you know, hundred thousand dollars. I went with New York Life and was getting paid zero. I was getting paid hundred percent commission because I wanted to work under Ms. Combs. And Ms. Combs used to take me to the mall and we used to walk up to people, directly up to people and say, hey, you have life insurance. And I was so uncomfortable with that, but she was just such a go getter. She was one of the best salespeople I had ever met. So I use that mentality to this day um, that Ms. Combs gave me. Um, but yeah, she she's definitely by far my biggest mentor. Uh, she passed away because of cancer. Um, but, you know, one thing I will say is people, when you ask me how I'm doing, obviously I'm doing unbelievable. I learned that in New York Life in 2004. <laughs> and it's a term that I say almost 20 years later, the, the training that I got at New York Life, I wouldn't be the same salesperson if... I didn't get that training. And she was the one that even when I went in for my interview with her, I interviewed and she was like, you know, Dominic, what's your biggest accomplishment so far in life? I was like, you know, Ms. Combs, I'm so happy I'm alive because of the, the background that I came from. So she took me in as like a mother figure and said, hey, I'm going to show you this business world. I'm going to polish you. You're a little mm -hmm. rough right now, but I'm going to polish you. And uh, um, from there, you know, I, I think, like I said, at the end of the day, I, I everything that I do in sales has been through my experience with New York Life. And Ms. Combs gave me that opportunity. Do you feel like you fell into the restaurant brokers? Like through life, certain things kind of just like put you in place, would you say? Like you're like, how did this all work out to get me here? And it kind of all worked out to help you succeed. Has you that, know, that, that that's a real interesting story? That's real interesting you said that because 
I had a real estate license. I got a real estate license in 2008 when the market was crashing. And I'm like, let me get a real estate license so when the market bounces back, I could be established. I did that from 2008 to 2010. And I realized that I didn't like selling homes. So I start looking into how can I get into commercial real estate? And I start looking online and I start looking for grants of programs that I can do. And randomly, I got an email said, have you ever thought about selling restaurants? <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't make this up. Like, I got an email at the same time I was looking at getting commercial real estate saying, hey, have you ever thought about selling restaurants? And at that time, I had never thought about selling restaurants. Yeah. But I went in for the interview, worked for them for seven years, and I'm here, you know, four years alone, my own broker. So, yes, I was prepared for the opportunity. I was ready. I didn't know what the opportunity was, but I was ready to move on to another opportunity in commercial real estate. And the opportunity found me. Yep. So everything kind of led up to that moment by accident. So the cards kind of just, they just perfectly align, which is, which is good. It's amazing. And it's, it's quite interesting how that happens sometimes. But also let me, let me tell you the other part. So after, after working as a restaurant broker for two and a half years, I'm like, man, this business is tough. Like, you know, like I mean, <laughs> this business is tough. So I left. In 2014 and 15, I, I left the company I was with, um, moved to Oklahoma, worked with a, um, a cigarette company. Even though I don't smoke cigarettes, but I worked with a cigarette company for two years. And I got a call. We want you to come back to become our sales development manager and train other brokers to do what you were doing when you were with our company. I'm like, you want me to come back to your company? I'm like, so packed up the family, packed up the bags and went back to Atlanta. Work with work with them for four and a half years, and then you know started my own broker. Each broker, so I was out of the business. So the crazy part is the business found me when I was looking at becoming getting into commercial real estate. I left for two years. The business came back and found me and said, "Hey, come back. We want you to be a sales development manager and teach people how to be sell restaurants." Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I think some things were meant to be, and that's why I'm so passionate about this because. Everything lined up for me to be in the position that I'm in now. Which is good. So you don't have to answer this question if you don't want to, but did you and the company, did you guys separate on good terms or was no. it just like, I'm out of here? Oh, okay. So, so you, you, you did it with that company. Then you left the company, went back again. You, you kind of got what you needed and you guys separated, not on the best terms, but yet you're still where you were still able to relocate and flourish and grow. So, which is good. So that, you know, what is it when uh preparation meets destiny or something? So they prepared you for who mm -hmm. you were going to be today. And uh, business has been booming ever since. So it, it uh, thank did, you uh, indirectly. <laughs> that correct. That's, that's correct. But, you know, I had to walk through the fire, you know, and, you know, pressure breaks pipe, but it also makes diamond and it made me a diamond. Mm -hmm. Which is good. So, yeah, everybody goes through something and it's all in how you get through it and what you do with it. And, and then also you learn about yourself when you're struggling. You know, I, I learned so much about myself. I learned so much about why I want to do this business when I was struggling and I wasn't successful. That's what helped me not quit. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was also they're not going to break me. They're not going to see me quit. You know, they're going to see me flourish. And that's always, you know, any everyone has motivation they take. You know, every good sports athlete, I played football at Morehouse for two years. So I'm an athlete. Every athlete has clipboard material or, you know, like that's what motivates me. Like, and I'm the same way. And I, and I got enough to last for years. You know? <laughs> uh, so it's just, yeah, I'm so in the industry. I'm so lucky to be on platforms like this to bring attention to this industry. Also bring attention to us showing us that, hey, if Dominic can do it, why can't I become a, even if you don't sell restaurants, you could be a business broker. I decided to only specialize in selling restaurants. And that's what I want to use my platform is to bring awareness, you know, to other cultures that, you know, when I walk in the room, a lot of times I may be the only one that's dark. You know, if I go to certain business brokerage meetings and, you know, they're looking at me like, who are you? You know, like, what? <laughs> this room, like, how did you get here? And they're like, yeah, I, I belong here, you know, like, you know, I'm more experienced. A lot of people in the room when I walk in, they just yeah. don't. Know. 
Yeah. And part of that is because you had to fight a little harder to get there. So you come in with the experience and the knowledge already. So once you get there, like, oh, okay, he, he knows his stuff. So oh, yeah, because yeah. yeah, you, you had to prepare yourself ahead of time, uh, which is, you know, depends on how you look at it. It could be a, a great thing. And it could also be a not so great thing. So uh, being able to get in those rooms is always good, though, at the end of the day. So I agree. And I love it. And yeah. I love it because I come from such a different, diverse background than they probably what I think I come from. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I'm polished. I, I get it. <laughs> but you don't know where I come from. <laughs> like, you know, like, it, it, it's always it, it's always interesting. And uh, it, it's such a blessing to be in some of the rooms, I must say. Yes. And then with that said, what do the people in your life think about your career? A lot of things. A lot of people are think it's cool. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people are like, you do what? <laughs> you sell restaurants? You sell restaurants in different states? Like, you write off all your meals when you go out and eat? Like, yeah, like, this is my, I'm a restaurant broker. <laughs> uh, so it's been, I've been saying restaurant broker since 2017. They didn't, when I came in the business in 2010, September 2010, they weren't even saying restaurant broker. It wasn't even a term. So being that uh just educating people about what a restaurant broker is um how i make my living what i do it's been really cool um it's it, it's it's gave me a purpose i didn't expect to be honest with you you know like <laughs> it's kind of taken on a life itself of uh, you know like this guy's a restaurant broker yeah you know and uh, um to hear my daughter saying you know my dad's a restaurant broker and people are like what you know like there's just people don't understand what i do a lot of people don't you know, you... You can... oh, well, what, I was, what I was going to say is most people know 10 to 20 real estate agents, you know, but how many restaurant brokers do you know? You know, I, I always love to say that. Like, how many do you know? <laughs> yeah, the average person, probably none. <laughs> Because once right. you once you introduce them to them, like, okay, I didn't know that you could do that. Like, right. yes, you can. Right. So um, in Dallas, are you still like doing educational platforms? Are you still teaching people how to open or to sell restaurants? Or are you just more so focused on selling? Uh, well, I actually just went to uh, DeSoto High School to talk to about a month ago to talk to high schoolers about getting into the industry. Um. And so I don't teach like adults, the classes and stuff like that. I, mm -hmm. My focus is I want to go to the younger kids. Well, I, I love to go and I would love to get into college and just tell them about business brokerage and talk to them about restaurant valuations and multiples. I mean, I think this is the type of stuff that kids should be taught in school. You know, if you look at buying a business, how to do a valuation on that business? How do you know if you're buying it too high or buying it too low? Um, I love the aspect of talking with restaurant owners, educating them about the resale process. I love restaurant owners to contact me a year before they want to sell so we can talk about how they should do their taxes, you know, like our certain costs at certain expenses they may not want to write off. You know, it's the smart people that plan to sell the restaurants two years before they need to sell it because two years they're increasing the tax returns. You know, and that's how you get a better sales price. They're playing the game right. Um, so that's just, that, I love educating people about that, that aspect of it. Um, eventually, yeah, I will build up a team and, you know, bring other minorities under me into this business, give them a lot of times there's no opportunity. You know, when people ask me, how can you become a restaurant broker? I'm like, you have to join a firm. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, those firms aren't hiring for a lot of times. So how do you get into it? How do you get the experience? It's a catch. Um, so I hope to have an avenue where I can bring people in. But at the end of the day, I can't give everyone the secret sauce. Like there's very few of us. Why would I give the secret sauce to everybody? You know, like to be that's what that that's what other people say the same thing. Like, hey, why should we let them know? Wow. Like, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's a little secret sauce to this business of building a business, a restaurant brokerage, because everyone can't just go out and do it. It's, it's not easy at all. It's very complicated. I laugh and I joke and, you know, and people, you know, people see me on social media think it's easy, but it's not, you know, I just have a good time with it. Yeah. Cause I literally did it for a hot minute, literally a hot minute. <laughs> like, okay, that's enough for me guys. I'm done here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
Well, my business is just getting to now, every day I'm waking up, like, how can I drive my business forward? You know, there's so many different things that if, if I start doing my business, pick up even more. Um, so I'm excited about that. Like every day I wake up and I'm just I'm fired up. You know, I'm just waiting for my waiting for a call because one call can change my life. I don't know who's calling me today or tomorrow. I don't know. Yeah, you're gonna have an awesome 2014. I could bet on that for you. <laughs> I, I I appreciate that so much, and you know I'm just gonna keep grinding. I'm keep representing for the people that you know don't have someone to represent for them in this industry. You know? Yeah, yeah, hold it down for us. Oh, definitely, oh, definitely, definitely. And then I, hopefully I inspire somebody. You know, <laughs> I would love if you ask. You know, what I would love in the future is someone to walk up to me or, or someone to send me a message. Hey. I became a restaurant broker because I heard your story. You know, like I would drop the mic. I might stop my business. <laughs> like, because there was no one to go to like that when I was coming up in the industry. Definitely no one that looked like me that I can reach out to. There's so many people that reach out to me now. And I'm very fortunate. You know, they, hey, Dominique, you know, can we talk to you? And it, it's I, I'm enjoying the ride, but I pay my dues. You know, I pay my dues in this business. And I went through a lot of sleepless nights. I went through multiple years where I didn't make money. I made, I took a loss, you know, um, but I always knew where my business could be. You know, I always envisioned, I always envisioned uh, that next level where I can take it to. Yes. And um, I finally see that it's, I can finally see the light now. I'm not in the dark anymore. I can actually see the light. <laughs> yeah. But 2021, 20 and 21 were ugly. You know, those are my first two years of owning my business. And most people fold their business in two years. And I just knew I couldn't do that. But it was ugly in the restaurant industry, definitely for a person that was just starting off their own brokerage. Mm -hmm. It was I, I took a huge risk and I didn't know COVID was going to hit, you know, literally six months after I started my brokerage. And um, but I survived and uh, I got a story. To tell. I got a story to tell. So I love to be on platforms like this. Yeah. Well, I, I definitely thank you for your story I, and everything that you told us and the educational aspect of it all and letting us know how we could get into uh, business brokering, how to thrive in the industry, what to do to, you know, just get your foot in the door and make sure you don't give up on your dreams. And that's really what it's all about here is opening up the platform and allowing people to see the opportunities that do exist in real estate and, you know, just letting you know that there are opportunities out there to thrive and you know to create the the future that you dream of so before we leave is there anything that you want to leave the audience with any motivation anything or anything that you're working on bet on yourself and that's the model that i live on every day i'm gonna bet on myself because i work off 100 percent commission so i have to bet on myself i know that i can do this and I know that I may not win today, but I could win tomorrow. You know, I may not win this week, but I can win next week. Uh, and then also, I know that there's a lot of people that make a lot of money in this industry. And one day I want to be like those people. So, you know, all those motivations, I would just say bet on yourself. You know, a lot, a lot of people, when I told them I was going to start my restaurant brokerage firm, they said, what? What do you, why? What are you going to do? <laughs> How? You like, I'm just like, man, okay, that's how y'all feel about me. Okay, hey, right, that oh, hurts. Okay, oh, okay. <laughs> got me that bulletin board, <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna start my own and I'm gonna call it Eat Broker. And yeah, yeah, this is me, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So, yeah. a lot of it is telling sometimes of telling your dream and aspirations to people that may not see the same dream and aspiration, they may not understand your vision. They may not say, they may say, oh, how, how can you do that? Well, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> what do you mean? How can I do it? I'm going to do it. You yeah. know, so that's, if anyone, my model is always bet on yourself. And, and that's what I did in this industry. And you heard it. So take that with you guys. So whatever you do, just be sure to uh, bet on yourself and get the job done. So thank you for joining me today again on another episode of Powerhouse You, and we'll see you next week for more. And Dominique, thank you so much for being with us again. You, uh, just like last time, you are adding so much value to the Powerhouse You channel and so much good content to the viewers, and I appreciate you for that. I appreciate you having me on this platform, and I appreciate you covering this topic.
Oh, you're welcome. Anything I could do to help our people. So once again, thank you for watching Powerhouse View. You all have a good day.